The following is a special sports presentation of the Iowa Television Network. The Gophers came out to face a charged up Hawkeye team Saturday. Rick Bayless found the 1,000 yard mark. Jeff Drost acquired a taste for Gopher meat. And Rob Houtland assured that Floyd would return to Iowa. Big Ten sweet success on the Hayden Fry Show tonight. The Hayden Fry Show is being brought to you in part by Amana Refrigeration and the Amana Retailers of Iowa. When you know exactly what you want, Amana. And by John Deere Consumer Products. Remember, nothing runs like a deer. Here's a tip on keeping warm this winter. Our home court on KWWL Channel 7. We are back in the Dome, but this is the bubble in Iowa City and not the Metrodome where all those fireworks exploded on Saturday night. And Hayden Fry and yours truly on location in the Dome. And Hayden, here we are right down here. There's the camera way up there. And uh, I had to do this, uh, had to celebrate because uh, I've got to wear the famous dog coat. Every time you go to a bowl game, I got to put on the dog. So I'm going to be wearing this, Ed. Jim, that's a beautiful coat. I've been waiting for this to come out all year long. <laughs> Everybody's been asking me about it, and here it is, the famous dog coat. It actually is beautiful dogs on there, and the theme of it is putting on the dog. But we're also uh, talking about a pig today, aren't we? A pig that returned to Iowa where it belongs. Mm -hmm. Most beautiful pig in the world, our director, producer here, David Wright, with Floyd. That's Floyd <laughs> Rosedale. <laughs> And David, we said if we're going to win, <laughs> David's got to carry that 200-pound pig. Jeff Dross kind of had it up by its, uh, by its hind leg, but he can do that. David uh, took both hands to bring it in. Floyd is back. Floyd, we love you. <laughs> Hayden, I'll just have to tell you, I've done 38, 39 now, Iowa-Minnesota football games. And incredible, unbelievable, astounding, astonishing. Uh, not even strong enough words to describe what happened up there at the Metrodome on Saturday night. Well, I'll put it this way, Jim. There's probably been a lot of fights over pigs uh, around the world, but never one uh, like the one we had with Minnesota. I mean, they looked like they had the knockout punch on you. 17 to nothing lead, 11 points in the last mm -hmm. half, and you guys just put on an incredible show to come back. Unbelievable. Truly a courageous performance by our people, Jim. As you know, we were very wounded, and they uh, forgot about being wounded and uh, one of the greatest comebacks I've ever been associated with. Okay, we'll talk more about that, but right now we're going right to the game because there's so much to cover in here. Ricky Foggy, as you've already said, one of the most dangerous quarterbacks, but you threw him for a nine-yard loss with Jeff Drost, who was playing hurt, wasn't he? Well, Jeff, uh, along with five or six other youngsters, did not uh, practice during the entire week uh, just so they could play in the game. And big number 76, an uh, inspirational football player. And Kerry Burt uh, got a nice tackle there for uh, Thompson. He held him to six yards. Now, Rick Bayless and company get going here. Uh, well, Rick up the middle for 12. Here's uh, Tom Pohoski throwing a strike to Quinn Early. A, a really a freak play. Quinn has the ball. A Minnesota youngster did a good job knocking it out. It hit his knee, bounced up in the air, and they got an interception. And that was Donovan Small. And here's Thompson. Always dangerous, isn't he? Well, I'd like to compliment Minnesota. I thought their young men played uh, tremendous football. Uh, it was just a great, great football game on both sides of the ball. But the Hawkeyes won it by three, and we'll show you how they did it. That was Ricky Foggy. No gain. You see, the, their standard stuff you handled very well. Did an excellent job on the wishbone, the eye formation. Uh, most of their big yardage came on uh, broken plays or foggy uh, scrambling. Okay, uh, Re Hate recovered that uh, uh, fumble, and now we have Foggy back to pass. Throws out of bounds under pressure. You had a lot of it on him. I'd like to recognize the fact that uh, Dave Hate and John Breeze, there's big number 76, Jeff Dross, um, Iron Kepi, uh, Schuster, Joe Schuster, all those guys did a great job. But the ones that did the greatest job, Jim, on the defense, 
We left Dan Worth and J.J. Puck behind. George Davis at linebackers wounded on the opening kickoff. And Brad Quash didn't work out all week. And they did a fantastic job. Gets scored that touchdown for Minnesota, the young freshman back from the state of Minnesota. And that was Bayless for 12. And now we're going to take a look at Tommy Paholsky. He got dinged on the head, didn't he, in the well, course he, of the action? He did, really. He really uh, had a tremendously sore jaw last night. He's trying to eat a sandwich after the ball game and uh, he couldn't get it down. That was Robert Smith for 19 yards. Now we're back to Minnesota. This is Getz going for two, tackled by Burt and Ross. Jim Riley and uh, Tyrone Taylor, Tim Batterson, some of the uh, linebackers you haven't heard a lot of, played excellent football in the ball game. And here is a tough guy. He's a leading rusher in the Big Ten, Thompson on a counterplay. Look at the he big guy grab him. He ran into the wrong guy. Jeff draws at 285 or 90 pounds. And here's Foggy as he tries to option. Mm -hmm. Basically, he handled that pretty well, but he's a slippery customer, isn't he? He really is. Kerry Bird, Keaton Smiley, Sistrunk, Kyle Crow, Kenny Sims. All those guys did a fabulous job of supporting from the secondary. Now, look at that little play there. It was just tremendous execution. And Darrell Thompson, the big freshman running back, uh, probably has 1,200 yards now rushing this year. He does. And Minnesota now leads the Hawkeyes 14 to nothing. Looks like trouble right on target there for Holsky tomorrow. And Jimmy almost broke this, didn't he? A tremendous run by Jim Morrow and a, and a great uh, effort by Tommy just to get loose. You can see he goes to the left. He has pressure, drops back to the right. And Morrow's about the third uh, receiver on this particular pattern. Wonderful throw and a great run. Broke two tackles, goes 54 yards. And finally, Holmes, who led Minnesota in tackles, uh, number 35 will come on the scene here and will bring him down and knock him out of bounds. Richard Bass had another outstanding game. We couldn't play David Hudson, our big fullback again. Hopefully okay, he'll be uh, ready for the bowl game. Now, nice. This is a great play by Minnesota. The young man reached around, jerked the ball out of our quarterback's hands, and they recovered and stopped the obvious, uh, at least a field goal, if not a touchdown. The nose guard had recovered, didn't it? Here's Foggy. <laughs> but you put pressure on him, he had to throw the ball away. Yeah, and that, that was a terrible call by the official. Three times he threw the ball away, and with no one within 15 or 20 yards, no intended receiver, and we couldn't get the official to call it. Now some good passing by uh, Tommy Paholsky, under pressure. <laughs> Very well executed play to Jimmy Morrow. You can see the crowd noise is so loud that Tommy's giving hand signals to the wide receivers on a pass play. Throws a strike to Quinn early. Quinn had another great football game. Watch him go for the extra yardage. <laughs> I think we may see a replay on that one. He did a little acrobatics on it. You tell we really missed him uh, five games at the beginning of the season. Oh, just great. He's a tremendous athlete, great receiver. And fortunately, he'll be coming back next year. Look at that. Sacrificing himself. And now Paholsky runs into trouble as he throws into traffic in the end zone here. Now we're back down again. This is a poorly thrown ball here. Uh, Tommy's got to learn to throw the ball out of the end zone when his uh, receivers are covered. A very fine interception by Minnesota and uh, knocks us out of uh, another touchdown. But uh, you guys get one back on him here as Ricky Foggy is intercepted by Sistrunk. It's a great interception. The timing, getting his foot down before he went out of bounds by number 22, Dwight Sistrunk. Okay, now uh, as uh, Minnesota continues to march uh, downfield, there's the interception once again. Right. We had great pressure inside. Uh, George Davis uh, came off the sideline and did a wonderful job. And here's history, Hayden. 62-yard field goal by Chip Lowmiller, and it takes place right before halftime, 17 to nothing. And that's not what you want to have happen to your ball club going into half, do you? Well, it really gave Minnesota additional uh, momentum going in at halftime. 62-yard uh, field goal on the last play of the half. Uh, we're out 17-0. to What'd you tell them at halftime? <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a serious well, question. You know, the, the big thing was to, for our team to realize we'd been down uh, on the goal line twice, didn't get a single point out of it, to keep their composure, keep their poise. We've been moving the ball well. We've been playing good defense. All we had to do is make a few adjustments at halftime. Our staff did a great job, and that's what we did. And uh, Paholsky had been dinged on the side of the head, so you made your determination then to start Mark Velasic, right? Right. Velasic looked very good in pregame warm-up. Uh, his arm looked stronger than it had since he'd uh, originally been injured, and uh, we went with Velasic second half. You're going to watch now what I think and what many people think may be the greatest half of football 
ever played by an Iowa football team coming from behind. You stay tuned. Now, don't kid us, Aiden. One of the biggest changes you made at halftime, you put your dark glasses on when you came out. We all noticed that. You know, Jim, I uh, really was at the end trying to figure out what we could do at halftime. And uh, I'm a very superstitious person. And I always wear my dark glasses. I, they're prescription glasses. I have to have them to really see the players on the field. I can read OK without glasses. But I'd had on the, the white glasses, the clear glasses. And uh, the only thing I could think of I was doing different that I didn't have on my shade. So I put them on at halftime, and you know what happened to say <laughs> oh, Hawkeye scored 30 points. I put on my Holiday Bowl coat right here because uh, I felt so confident uh, that the Hawkeyes were going to do it. Not all the way through, however, I have to admit that. But the Hawkeyes came out kind of a rejuvenated team in the second half, weren't you? Well, we, uh, we knew we'd been extremely close the first half, and uh, we've got Mark Velasic, our number one quarterback, who'd separated his shoulder early in the season. And... Uh, this is uh, the strongest mark has looked, and he played a phenomenal second half. You see he gets hit on the first pass. That's a shot to Rick Bayless. We pick up nine on his first throw. I think he completes around 11 consecutive passes. 11 consecutive. 199 yards passing, one touchdown. Great shot to Quinn Early. Wonderful throw and catch. Quinn Early uh, had another magnificent ball game. We, we were very diversified, Jim, in the second half. Finally going to get some points on the board here. Rob Houtland, 49-yard field goal. What a night this guy had. Well, I'll tell you, Minnesota did a great job of stopping us, uh, making us go for a field goal in the second half. They, they played inspirational football the entire game. Finally, Iowa breaks the scoring drought. It's now 17-3. Now, this really inspired the ball club. That's Joe Mott, big defensive end. Three-yard loss for Ricky Foggy. Here's now one of the greatest plays, greatest plays of the season right here. Peter Marciano. He gets seven excellent blocks. You can just see them falling like pins. Mm. Wonderful blocks. Peter utilizes his blockers, accelerates, cuts back inside. A couple of more good blocks. And that's about a 90-yard TD punt return. 90-yard touchdown return. And I think uh, his uncle, Rocky Marciano, must have been looking down from heaven and nudging him on on that one. Oh, what a great run back. Great defense here. Tremendous defense. Uh, I can't say enough about Darrell Thompson, number 39 from Minnesota, a young well, man. Is, or Brad Cost, number 35 for Iowa. <laughs> How about number 35? Didn't work out all week, yeah. couldn't raise his arm at all. And came Great in. run there now. By, watch this run by Foggy. Jim, we missed more tackles on this young man than we did in three games uh, combined. Look at that move. He's a great, great athlete. Incredible performance. And Minnesota looks like, again, they're going to put it out of reach, 24 to 17. Great uh, run by Kevin Harmon. You can tell Kevin's well, and he's uh, Rick Bayless took some real punishment in the ball game. He did get his thousand yards rushing. Another strike by Velocic uh, to Jimmy Morrow, Quinn Early, with Robert Smith throwing a block. Excellent protection. It's a throwback to our tight end, who in turn throws the ball downfield. We have interference on the play. First time you've used that exotic, uh, Mike Flagg trying his first pass, right? Oh, really, we were too close to the end zone. Mike couldn't throw it well. He needs to be about 70 yards away. Okay, there's a penalty on that play, but the Hawks are forced to kick another field goal. Tremendous defensive uh, pressure. Another sack on uh, Foggy. I think we've got him six times during the ball game. That's okay. Myron Kepi. Now the Iowa Hawkeyes back. Strike right over the middle. Most of these plays, Jim, now are, are critical uh, uh, down situations. This might be a first down play, but most of them are third down. That's to Marv Cook. All Marv of our Cook. tight ends were instrumental in moving the ball. And now uh, we're going to see one, I think, to Bayless here. Super throw and catch right down to the goal line. And watch this play. I think we fake out to Cameron on this. <laughs> you really did. Everybody got faked out on that one. Great fake inside to Harmon. There's a replay. Velocic throwing a strike to Mike Flagg for the touchdown. Okay, and the Hawkeyes are back in business again, but Minnesota's still out in front, 24 to 19. That's uh, number 22, Dwight Sistra, coming up with a fine play. On Daryl Thompson. Here's a big one. Velocic. Complete the flag. Mike had a great game, didn't he? That was either a third or fourth down in long yardage to keep the That's drive right. going. Good blocking by Chris Gamble, Sinlinger, Dave Croston, Bob Cratch. 
As Rick Bayless picks up eight yards. Another beautiful play right down the goal line. And watch Bayless now. Knocked him off the line of scrimmage on that one. Bayless puts it in for the touchdown. Now you go for two points here. Beautiful fake. Velocity growing right. This is Harmon slipping out of the backfield for the two-point play, and that was a critical play, Jim. Sure was. The Hawkeyes take the lead here now, 27 to 24. And we see a replay on that. It's only about, uh, well, I'm not for sure how much time we had left. Great play by Rick Schmidt. Rick played every position in the defensive backfield. Yeah, let's give him a lot of credit. Schmidt on tackle, five-yard loss for Minnesota. Too many people for him to scramble. Mott, Mike Burt, Bruce Mike. Gear. And, Mick, and Dave Haight, too, was in there. We see 147 left to play. We now enter the critical and most thrilling era of the ball game. Here's well, Low Miller. This surprised us here. We were playing for the fake field goal. It was fourth down and 10. We uh, didn't know they were going to go for the tie at that point. 27 to 27 right now, but watch the Hawkeyes. We come roaring back. We've got a minute and five seconds to go, or did have. You can see me motion for him to line up at the line of scrimmage to audibleize. And right now, it's getting down to about 15 seconds, and Rob Houtland tries 151 yards, mm -hmm. a little bit off to the right. But you got life. You got a reprieve on this. Jim, we got more in life. The, the man upstairs reached down and put his hand on our shoulder again, and uh, we get a second chance at it because Minnesota had 12 men on the field. Now it's going to be a 37-yarder for the victory. Boy, a hush came over those 65,000 fans, a record crowd. Look at the clock in the left corner there. You never give Rob Houtland two chances at a field goal, <laughs> I guarantee you. Were you guys ever happy? Were you guys? Well, we were, happened? you know, and I'd like to congratulate the, the timekeeper up at uh, Minnesota in the Metrodome. He, he somehow stopped that clock with one second remaining, and it doesn't show, Jim, but we had to kick off, and they used the old Stanford return. They pitched that ball back to six or seven different uh, runners, and uh, we finally deflected the ball and knocked it out of bounds. You did. I thought the uh, Stanford return might, might work with one second left to go, and you batted it finally out of bounds. You know why it didn't work? Why? They didn't have their band on the field like Stanford. <laughs> Right. The band came out later and serenaded for a long time. So the Hawks win it, a thriller as much as any game ever played up there, I would say. And now it's off to the Holiday Bowl in San Diego, and we have the executive director of the Holiday Bowl with us, and we're going to meet Mr. John Reed in just a moment. First met John Reed when he was at the University of Washington under the executive director of the Famous Holiday Bowl, and John, it's great to have you on our show. And I know that you've told me that you wanted to get Hayden Fry and the Hawkeyes, not necessarily the Pigs, but the Hawkeyes, <laughs> to come to the Holiday Bowl, and they're finally coming, and what a thrilling way to have them make the Holiday Bowl. What an absolutely thrilling way. It was just absolutely fantastic what happened in the Metrodome last night. I still haven't come back to Earth. I was so excited on the sideline the last few minutes of the game, I think I was turning cartwheels. Okay. We're absolutely thrilled to have the Hawkeyes come. Well, hey, this is bowl. your sixth bowl game. How do you feel about it? You know, we, were, uh, we weren't good enough, to be honest, to go to the Rose Bowl. But uh, by game time, I think we'll be one of the strongest teams in the nation. And uh, our players and coaches, we couldn't have selected a better place than uh, the Holiday Bowl in San Diego. The climate, the weather, the entertainment, the, the bowl organization, the stadium, we're going to be using the Chargers facilities, you know, everything just super. And your old Marine bases out there. Oh, well, I'll tell you, I hope I run into my old DI. <laughs> <laughs> John, what about uh, Iowa fans uh, coming out there? Uh, obviously, there's the San Diego Zoo, as Hayden said, the weather, uh, the ocean, everything, everything is just gorgeous out there. Uh, Iowa fans, are you going to have enough tickets to go around for all of them? Well, that's going to be a problem because Iowa fans are such great fans, and uh, we understand they'll probably use all of the 10,000 allotment, which I brought back here with me today. Uh, uh, I suggest they contact the Iowa ticket office. We have a few left in San Diego, but a very few. So they're going fast, and it's because of those great fans that you folks have. And, okay. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Hey, and everybody wants to know your travel plans. When are you going to take the team out there? Well, right now we plan on leaving the uh, 22nd of December, and uh, we will be out there until game time on the 30th. And uh, uh, it'll be all work, I guarantee you that, getting ready. But, uh, you know, we might let them slip off every now and then for a little sunshine. <laughs> Who are you going to play? Do you, do you know yet? The, well, you, that's really up in the air. Uh, uh, BYU, Air Force, and San Diego State are all still alive in the race, and it could be decided as late as December 6th when Air Force and BYU play. So uh, we're looking forward to it. The WAC champion is an automatic entry, and uh, believe me, 
whoever it is, they're going to have all they can handle in this great Iowa team. Well, I know you're happy to have the Hawks out there, aren't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. And Hayden, I know you're happy to be going out there, and don't let it get down to a last-second field goal, please. <laughs> uh, we can't take any more of it. Okay. Well, you know, that's been the history of the Holiday Bowl. Is it's a cardiac stadium. It is, and oh, man, all you got to do is look at some of those games, and we'll be back to talk more with Hayden Fry right after these words. There are a number of long-distance telephone companies out there. And you know, I'm not an expert on long-distance telephone calling. But you know, I've discovered something. Mid-American Company is a winner. They give quality rates, quality service. You can call any place in the United States and be satisfied. They've really become the technological leader in the telephone industry. I'm proud to be a member of the Mid-American team. Call the Mid-American account representative today and save money. Okay, Hayden, in closing, I think we both want to thank David Wright, uh, Chuck Lutz, Carla, and all the wonderful people on this TV crew for enabling us to, uh, this year to take the Hayden Fry Show on location. It's been a great year of our shows and also been a great year on the gridiron. Now, uh, you got to hit the trail, don't you? Isn't recruiting uh, time just around the corner? Jim, be all over the nation. We, uh, Our staff is already dispersed uh, evaluating young men, and uh, we have a lot of scholarships to give. If anyone's watching this program, it's Likes to play exciting football, uh, just come to University of Iowa. I, I mean exciting football. And later on, of course, we're going to be taking a look at 1987 and 1988. Right now, the Holiday Bowl, which incidentally Don, uh, John Reed said has been decided in every game except one in the last two minutes of play out there. That's true. They've been fantastic ball games, probably the most exciting games uh, of all the bowl games. Uh, and it looks like uh, we might have another one. And remember, on December 12th at Hancher Auditorium, in Iowa City, it's going to be the Hawkeye Awards night, and we're looking forward, I'm looking forward, and you're looking forward to honoring this great team of 1986. Perhaps the most courageous uh, group of young men we've ever put on the black and gold. I would certainly second that. And Hayden, thanks for another year of Hayden Fry shows, and we'll be seeing you at the Holiday Bowl. <laughs>